sit, sitting in there in the radio room, and we have our normal things to go over. And I'm getting the logbook done and working on a logbook. And we have a computer in there, and any calls that come in go up on the computer. And uh, Roy was sitting with me in there, and he goes, somebody's got a shooting. And we're like, shooting, you know. Right. And the, in the back of my mind, thinking, well, hopefully it's down south and, you know, right. whatever, you know. So I reached up, clicked on the info to see where it's at, and it came up 151 Chardon Avenue. And both Roy and I were like, uh oh. Yeah. This, this doesn't happen in Chardon. And I'm sure everybody that's had one of these tragedies in their community said the same thing in retrospect. You know, um, why? Why would that happen here? We have such a great community and such good kids. And Larry and I being involved so heavily with our own children's lives and through the schools and uh, and seeing the products of Chardon school system it's it's hard to it's hard to fathom um, just you see so many good kids we coach sports you know we've done that over the years we've watched a lot of sports um, and it's just you know and, and and you're in the schools you're seeing the kids we go to through the elementaries every year through K through five and we teach all the kids fire safety and they know us by fifth grade they know us by name you know and they and they, it just, it's, it amazes me that anything like that could happen in this community. But I'm sure anybody feels right. that way. And you don't think it's going to happen in your backyard. So I called up with Brian at the doors, went in with Brian, started going to the cafeteria. He goes, I got this in here. He said, I need you down the 200 block because we got one down there. Right. So started down 200 block and it was just, it, it was, I, I remember just walking through and saying, this just isn't happening, you know. And see, watching the, the sheriff's department going into the rooms, you know, with the guns up and everything like that, and it's just like, you know, it, it was just like, it was, it, to be honest with you, it was just like our training when we did it two well, years ago. Well, I was, uh, like Tom, I was multitasking. I had my, my, had my shard and fire radio on, listening to everything that was going on. I had uh, multiple parents calling me that uh, I'm friends with, and, and they had kids in the school. What do you know? What's going on? Have you heard from my kid? You know, and... Um, I hadn't heard from from anybody. Um, the trip from South Euclid to Chardon is probably about 35 minutes. Uh, it was probably about 25 minutes before I heard from my son. Oh. He borrowed somebody's cell phone, told me that he was in a classroom upstairs, and uh, they were on lockdown, and there was 20 kids. They were all on the floor, and the teacher had the door barricaded, and he wanted to know what was going on. And I explained to him what was going on. Told him, tell everybody in the class to stay on the floor until the police come and, and get every, gets everybody out. So uh, when you finally heard from him, obviously, what was, how did that feel? Oh, it was ecstatic. It was yeah. like... What about leading up to that 25 minutes? I mean, with, when, you, well, when you didn't know. We had just found out the night before that uh, he made the freshman baseball team. And uh, I'm going to get choked up, sorry. It's okay. And I'm thinking to myself, please don't let it be him. You know, something great just happened to him last night. And, you know. The thing that was gut-wrenching about this whole thing was, is I, I was working on his patient with, with Scott in the room. And right. we got him packaged up. We got him up and got him out. Scott went back out in the hallway. I was the only one left in the room. So I'm trying to put my trauma bag back together because there was stuff all over. And when I stood up, I turned around and... It, it it scared the hell out of me because there were 20 kids crammed in the back corner of this room and I didn't even know they were there. And they come over to Ray and say, hey, you have another one that's down in the cafeteria as well. Brian and I looked at each other at the same time and, and the thought on our mind was, I mean, it was like, we didn't say anything. We knew exactly what we were thinking. How many more are we going to be finding? You know, this is five. You know, how, how many more? And so I stuffed out in the cafeteria calling radio and I just happened to look up and there were 40 kids again smashed in the corner of this room and again dead silence. I mean right so I, I, I was just like yeah trying to catch my breath like where where did you come from you know right so again started from the left or started from the right and started panicking. everybody okay and Yeah. Your son, Kevin. Just put his hand up. Did he say, hey, Dad. <laughs> I'm fine. I did. 
And so that's probably when it... That duck. Yeah. I, I wasn't ready. I, mindset was, he wasn't even there. Right. So I said, uh, I, I pointed out, I said, you okay? And he goes, yeah, and, you know, gave me the look like, yeah. You know. Yeah. So I had to yeah, get the hell out deal, of there. You, know. yeah. you <laughs> right. had to leave. I, I had to get her right back to the patient because right. I, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for him to be there in any way, shape, or form, you know. And okay. I know what good friends he is with Nick. And then it was just a little bit later, you know, he says, Dad, I, I usually sit at that table with him, you know. So all of that, it, it, it just compounded. It's just, you know, in any of these instances, it's a matter of seconds or minutes, you know, of something, a little change in the daily routine, and it could have been a whole different outcome. Right.